And in business, the crisis caused by the coronavirus pandemic is plunging the world economy into debts unknown since the Second World War, adding to the woes of an economy that was already struggling to recover from the pre-2008 crisis. Beyond its impact on human health, COVID-19 is disrupting an interconnected world economy through global value chains, which account for nearly half of global trade. Abrupt falls in commodity prices, fiscal revenues, foreign exchange re receipts, among others. Nigerian and African countries are not spared. However, the IMF has approved debt relief for some countries. I'm not joined by Skype by Wale Olusi of United Capital. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, Nigeria wasn't included in the IMF's debt relief fund, as seen in the statement issued by IMF. What comes to mind about this? Well, um, I don't think that's surprising because over the years, Nigeria has not taken any IMF program. So as it is, we don't really have any um, IMF debts. Nigeria has over the years you know, favored World Bank debt um, as against the IMF debt, basically because of the conditionalities that comes with um, IMF debt. So when you do a debt relief, it will typically go to those countries who have facilities that are running with the IMF, not with countries that, you know, do not. So I think that's why uh, Nigeria will be excluded because we don't really have any running facility with the IMF. The only one we are looking to take now does not come with conditionality, and I think it's tied to some of the relief uh, that has been, uh, some of the problem that has been created as a result of the coronavirus. All right, I, I recall your team have been assessing the social and economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. What are your expectations in this regard? Well, I mean, for, 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 for me, um, social welfare packages for the coronavirus I think in Nigeria, we should just uh, make sure this is targeted at those, not just those that are most vulnerable, but, but those that are most impacted by, by some of the extreme measures that government have uh, imposed on the back of, you know, curbing the spread of the virus. For example, um, the numbers we are seeing, um, Lagos, Ogun State and FCT were the initial state that were on lockdown. And of course, that's because of the fact that these states are probably the most exposed. For example, as we speak today, over 400 cases in Nigeria, um, about more than half of those numbers are actually in Lagos. If you add the FCT to that number, um, they account for about 70% or more. But if you look at the breakdown of some of the conditional cash transfer that uh, the Ministry of Humanitarian Services have you know, claimed to have distributed, the bulk of them have gone to the southwest, I mean, to the northwest, to the northeast, and some of the areas that are actually not currently on lockdown. And then what we've seen in the suburb of Lagos, in the suburb of Ogun State, is this increased rate of um, um, criminal activity. Basically because, you know, people who are hoodlums want to take advantage of the fact that people can reason with them, there's hunger in the land, and then they want to rob. So I, I think what government can do is to give priority to some of the states that are most affected by the lockdown, just so we can maintain law and order and then curb the spread of the coronavirus. All right. Um, we understand investors have withdrawn um, about $83 billion from emerging markets since the start of the crisis. What does this portend for economies like ours? Well, I mean, I don't think it's um, unexpected when there's crisis like this. The bulk of uh, portfolio management fund that track emerging markets uh, and frontier markets, including Nigeria, are basically funds that are not here to stay. So once investors start start seeing, um, once they start, once they smell crisis or anything that will negatively impact their investment, what they do is to very quickly move this fund out of uh, emerging market to uh, the much more developed market because there they can access investment assets that are more secured is basically a, a run to save safety however what we've noticed over the last couple of days uh, following the um, 
OPEC agreement with some of the NOPEC member to cut production of oil so that we can stabilize the market. We've also seen a lot of um, interest in local equity and eurobond markets because uh, it looks like that stability might just be what the market requires, at least for now, just so investors can take advantage of the cheap prices of some of these um, investment assets, and then they can jump in. But on the whole, many of these investors will favor assets that are safe for now until there's a sort of stability in the global economy. So this is not a good time for emerging market economy because many uh, institutional investors want to be safe, safety first. And then uh, when the problem is gone, we can now start looking for where the opportunities are again. Um, I do hate to interrupt, but I must say thank you very much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us on the news, Wally. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon again.